Group. I'm calling to order the Tuesday, August 6th fiscal subcommittee meeting. Uh, at this time, we'll do a roll call. Superintendent Danbrook. Here. Assistant Superintendent McCaffrey. Present. Director Bold. Here. Director Dr. Taylor. Here. Uh, Mr. Mark is absent. Mr. White is absent and I'm present. So we have a quorum. Uh, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. New business. First item, we have discussion update, 2024 financial close risk report. How's that going? Uh, so controller is focused on the closing of the financials for, for the year end of June 30th, 24. The audit, the financial statement audit is due December 31st, 24. We set an internal goal of being on time this year. We've been late the past couple of years in getting it through the, the auditor's process. Um, I would just say that that's also contingent on the city's portion of the audit. So even if we're ahead of schedule or on time, we do need the city to be on time and on schedule as well. Um, I've asked the controller to be done with a draft of the financials to be sent to the auditors by the end of September. So I'm hoping that by the end of September, we'll have um, a good balance sheet and income statement to be able to review um, to see where we ended the year. It's still a little preliminary because we're cleaning things up and, and making journal entries as we go. Um, uh, and then if, if she gets that to the, the auditors by the end of September, that gives us three full months to complete any of the audit testing that the auditors request. So I'm hoping that that timeline works out this year. We have the, the staffing for it. So um, that is the goal for this year 24. Great. Any questions, comments, concerns? Funny jokes? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Next item update FY25 year to date percent utilization to FY25 budget, Mr. Cole. So for um, fiscal year 25, we've only spent 3.82 million so far, um, which it's the beginning of the year. There's still um, 3.8 million. So. Yep. So as a percentage, that's less than 2% of the overall budget. Um, very little spent usually in the first month of the fiscal year. So I would just say that utilization is usually only like a useful metric once we get closer to like the halfway point for the year. Because um, at that point, we've already spent a lot of the programmatic like non-staffing expenditures. Um, and we'll know or at least have a better idea of what year-end headcount is going to be for the school year. Uh, so again, just we've spent less than two percent of the budget, but that's common for this time of year. Great. Any questions, comments? All right. Next item, we have uh, discussion update: interim purchasing policies, Ms. Danbro. How do you want to do transportation? Oh, excuse me. Uh, discussion update, transportation contract status update, Mr. McCaffrey. Uh, transportation contract was approved last uh, uh, yesterday afternoon uh, by the school committee. Uh, we're working with first student to uh, complete any outstanding details such as the necessary buses, necessary cameras, and the routing for the year Carl is working on, so we're in good shape. Right. They, they did receive the executed contract today, yes. so they have it now. Awesome. All right. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. Discussion update in term purchasing policies, Ms. Danbrook. Okay, Craig, you can jump in whenever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't want to plug in. I gave everyone a copy of this. Yeah, I think we can read off it. We can yeah. read like okay. some of the high level stuff. Okay. Um, and then we can just discuss it. All right. Go. I explained that this is um, going to all the budget managers, um, it will make us more consistent and it will make us. <laughs> do right by the bidding and permit policies and procedures sorry so um we talked about all purchases of five thousand dollars and more require the use of vendor chosen by competitive bidding so it tells exactly what the budget manager has to do um, also exceptions to the bidding process like for instance emergency purchases 
sickle sauce vendors and some safe cards. So this will go to all the budget managers so we'll have consistency across the district. And another thing we're gonna be doing is we're going to be meeting once a week and we're gonna have a, a chat that has um, the um, budget manager and what they wanna purchase. This is gonna be purchase rec requisition chat and um, and then Brandon and I will sit down and go over all the purchase requisition requests and if anything's over, you know, over budget, uh, not over budget, but over the 5,000, then uh, we will catch it. Nice. And Kayla will be there too. Yep. Great. So the, the, the memo is really just a high level expectations of what is expected of budget managers and purchasers throughout the district when it comes to bidding. Um, I think it, it largely follows the procedures that we have memorialized, but I think the communication to budget managers and purchasers has been lacking. And so I think one of the biggest things is really just making it clear what the expectations are as a budget manager when it comes to going out to bid. Um, I think we've done a good job of like an expense is $5,000 or more. It needs to go to school committee, but then there's been some gray area of, well, did you go out to bid? Um, and so this sort of clarifies the situations where you need to go to bid and also provides the exceptions where we don't need to go to bid. So if it's on a master purchasing agreement or it's an emergency purchase. Um, and we talked about emergency, what, you know, what's an emergency? Everyone has a different yeah. definition. Yep. So if someone um, is requesting emergency approval, then it will go to me and it will go to you as well, Chair. Okay. okay. Great. And I think more than anything, it's it's a matter of communication. I think that that's sort of where the situation where we found ourselves in is, has originated. It's just unclear to certain um, to, to budget managers what the expectations are in terms of bidding. So making it more clear is gonna is gonna help with that. No, I think this is a great idea. Um, you know, if anything, it acts as a good refresher training for everybody and. Uh, gets everyone on the same wavelength and standardizes uh, all the practices across across the board. So one more thing at our administrative retreat, um, Mr. Bull is going to be doing some training to all the principals as well. Great, great. And the principals act as budget managers for their schools. Yep. And I, I think one one last thing to add is just again we're at the very beginning of the implementation for the new ERP system but a lot of the checks that we've sort of relied internally on people doing manual review should be automated um, so rather than it taking like a review by myself or the superintendent or the purchasing coordinator to catch like a five thousand dollar expense and then ask the question did we go out to bid um, the system itself should flag any expenses that are above a certain threshold and like send an alert to whoever is responsible. Um, so the hope is that a lot of that review gets automated. Cool. Anything else? Other comments? All right. Leading us to our last item, discussion update, uh, identification of procurement and bid policies for updating. So I've identified three uh, policies that I'm hoping we could uh, all vote in agreement on to send to the policy subcommittee and then certainly you guys could provide your input to them for them to update this and it would be another show of the cause on our part of reviewing everything and I think that uh, if there's anything on here that you've added kind of new that doesn't really follow this it's obviously you've added it because it's good practice so getting it into the appropriate one so uh, I'm just going to make the motion that uh, this subcommittee sent to the subcommittee on policies, policy G, uh, D, J, F, purchasing procedures, policy D, J, C, bidding requirements, and policy D, I, C, financial reports and statements. I added that one in uh, just because I maybe we can look to see best practice uh, in terms of all the other stuff that we've been dealing with, um, you know, in FY24 and everything else figure out how that way we can have kind of maybe it's more visual throughout the year or I know that when that new ERP comes it's going to be a lot better for us and uh, a little bit more real time uh, but until then what is it that we can do 
you know, to address that. So moved. All right, made by Mr. McCaffrey. Second. Seconded by Dr. Taylor. All those in favor? All right. All right, carries 5 0. We're now on to uh, public comment. Any members from the public wishing to comment? Somebody jumps out. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, October 1st, 2024, 3 p.m. Eastern. I didn't schedule a finance meeting for September because I know all of you at the administrative level are very busy with schools kicking off. Um, and then we'll only be in the second or third month of the fiscal calendar. So uh, I didn't see it uh, as prudent that we meet in September. Um, if, any objections to that? Or do you guys feel that that's reasonable? Yeah. You would tell me otherwise? Yep. Well, especially, I think, to your point, the policy committee is going to take up the charge on some of this, yeah. so there is finance work going okay. in the month. Yep. Great. Cool. So, uh, be it that there's no additional business before this committee, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. By Dr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. McCaffrey. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.